Soiny thinks cloud gaming can eliminate piracy and consoles. What's that I hear? Oh, it's the sound of me being vindicated again. Who could have seen that coming? Yeah, this is exactly what I've been saying for a long time. All of the big publishers and developers are making a massive push towards cloud gaming because then they have 100% complete control of everything. And like this says here in the title, eliminates piracy. And uh, yeah, consoles, you don't need hardware anymore. Th that's the advantage of streaming, isn't it? The way game streaming works is you just stream inputs up to the server. The server is running the game and it just streams video back down to you. The perfect system as far as these publishers are concerned. They get to charge you a subscription fee to maintain access to their servers even for single player games. Piracy will be a thing of the past. As I've explained before, it's not like reverse engineering an MMO server. On an MMO, like let's let's use World of Warcraft as an example. The client does most of the work. The server is really just a database for the most part. So if you just sniff the traffic from your WoW client to the server, you can eventually reverse engineer a server. But that's not going to happen with streaming. There's nothing to sniff. It's just button inputs one way and video stream the other way. You can't reverse engineer anything out of that. This is the world that AAA wants. Not the world I want. That's my line, by the way. If a game is streaming exclusive, I could live without it. Yeah, I don't need it. But yeah, this will kill consoles, absolutely. There's no need to have a console if you don't need the hardware anyway. Like, dude, if games are streamed, a smart TV can handle it. Streaming video games is no different than streaming Netflix. Because all it is is a video stream going back down. The only difference is there will be a bunch of, uh, of inputs from you going up to the server as well. And then after about a second worth of lag, you're going to get it back down. But anyway, Sony believes that cloud gaming is in many ways superior to the way most people play games today. So, no, it's not. Cloud gaming, as, as evidenced by Stadia, is never going to be superior to installing something and running it locally. But it's a better deal for the publishers because they get to have 100% complete control over everything. So in a recent patent application, the company argues that when people no longer store games on local devices, piracy will become irrelevant. At the same time, this means that expensive consoles are no longer needed either. Yeah, just remember, man, that meme I keep talking about, it's going to be a reality soon. It will. Yeah, you, you know that old meme about that corporate, uh, like the board meeting? That, that, that's what we're going to have right here. Is uh, It's going to be Soiny HQ, and one dude is presenting saying, I am pleased to report that thanks to, uh, to, to moving all of our games to streaming only, thanks to going exclusively cloud, we have 100% eliminated the piracy of our games. And everybody cheers. And then the guy in the back raises his hands like, um, but we've also cut our paying customers by 95%. And then he gets thrown out the window. And with the release of the first uh, sensor station in December of 1994, Sony solidified a key position in the game industry. Yeah, they were actually good up through maybe the PS3. Uh, over the past decades, many new consoles followed, earning the company billions of dollars per year. Yeah, to the point where PlayStation was the only thing keeping the company afloat. Today, console and PC gaming are larger than ever before, and the gaming audience is only expected to grow further. On mobile and PC, consoles are flatlined. However, with technology advancing, the way people play games will eventually evolve. The cloud in particular is expected to become increasingly important. Not because us gamers want it but because the publishers want it. 
this isn't news to Soiny. The company uh, bought the game streaming uh, service on live in current year minus six. Wow. That, that was a big success and launched a PlayStation Now platform soon after. Even uh, earlier, Sony's first references to remote gaming have uh, already appeared in patent applications. In today's gaming ecosystem, the, the formerly Japanese gaming giant... No, no, no. PlayStation is a U.S. American brand. Parent company Sony might still be in Japan, but their gaming division is American. Stop pretending the company is Japanese. You know, certainly isn't the leader in cloud gaming. However, the company takes the technology very seriously, which recently shows in a patent application. The application titled System and Method for Streaming Game Video builds on earlier patents. Along the way, the term remote gaming has changed to cloud gaming, but the idea remains the same. So this is the plan, by the way. Even if they're never going to compete with Microsoft on the actual infrastructure, if they can get enough patents in cloud gaming, then even if Microsoft takes over the whole industry, Sony can still get money from their patents. Now, patents are notoriously unappealing to read and stuffed with technicalities, uh, which won't, which we won't repeat here. I can vouch for that. I'm actually on a few patents. And uh, when, when uh, I was given the patents to review before we submitted it, I didn't even read that shit. I got like five pages into the hundred fucking pages worth of shit. And I, I, I don't care. It's like, it, it looks good to me. Just fucking patent it. I don't care. You don't pay me enough to read this shit. However, a few general themes are worth repeating as it shows why Sony believes cloud gaming is important. They believe it's important because they want full fucking control. No more getting around censorship. No more modding. Yeah, that, that's, that's what's going to go. I hope people realize that if you keep supporting these companies, even after they go cloud exclusive, like, oh, but I can't live without my Bloodborne, guys. If Bloodborne is cloud only, I'm going to go to the cloud. I'm sorry. My Dark Souls, my Demon Souls, my Bloodborne. Oh, I can't just give up on that. If you're one of those people, I... Better not catch you bitching about uh, censorship you can't remove, about how modding is gone, about how you know, they, they keep jacking up the, the live service fee. I better not hear you bitching about how you have to pay 30 bucks a month to gain access or to maintain access to these games that you then also have to purchase separately and then purchase DLC for and then pay a subscription to keep being able to access them. Anyone who supports cloud gaming, at least as an exclusive, as opposed to just another option to play games you already own, you get what you fucking deserve. I better not hear you bitching about it later. This is our one chance to stop this because the big publishers and developers, they will not stop. Their end goal is cloud gaming. They want to force you onto their system. They want to make it so the only way you can game is under their complete control. If you let them do this, then, uh, well, as the old saying goes, Gamers get the industry they deserve. If you can't resist having that shiny exclusive, like, oh, going to the cloud is worth it for this exclusive, you are the problem. So I better not hear you complaining about it. This is a very simple thing to fix. If people refuse to support this, it'll go away. But we have to be vigilant because these guys are never going to stop. These corpos will keep trying to push it until it works. So we just got to make sure it never works. So basically, it's going to happen, and there's going to be another gaming industry crash, and all the people that enabled it are going to be crying, and I'm going to point and laugh. According to Soini, uh, cloud gaming could be a game changer when it comes to online piracy. Yeah, that's, see, notice th they don't give a shit about uh, the quality of the game and the experience for the consumer. All they care about is the piracy, is how it affects their bottom line. 
if they have to make the if, if they have to cripple the entire industry, they will do it. In fact, it has the potential to eliminate the piracy problem altogether, which is actually true. This is absolutely true. If gaming goes streaming exclusive, then the only way to pirate those games would be if someone hacked the servers and got access to the game's code and then made their own server. Now, piracy is a major problem for the video game industry. The security mechanisms utilized on virtually every major video game system have been cracked over the years, resulting in unauthorized copying of video games. Yeah, You, you know what else is going to be lost in addition to everything else I've said before? J just being able to keep these games around. Once all gaming is forced on the cloud, even if it's a single-player game, they could just arbitrarily turn the server off. Like, ah, we don't want to support this game anymore. There's only like three people actively playing it. Let's just kill it. And the game's gone forever. Unless the company uh, benevolently releases the code to that game, it will never return. That game will forever be gone. And you'll never have any way to play it ever again. This is the, the direction the industry is heading in. If you guys support cloud-exclusive gaming, that's exactly what you're going to get, and you're going to deserve all of it. The patent application sums up a long list of piracy challenges and, notice, and notes that stopping unauthorized copying is notoriously difficult. With cloud gaming, however, piracy could simply become irrelevant. Games can no longer be pirated as they are today because each game is stored and executed at the hosting service. Users are not provided with access to the underlying code, and there is nothing to pirate. Even if a user were to copy the source code, the code uh, the user would not be able to execute the code on a standard game console or home computer. Oh, see, see, they're going a step further. They're go they dude, this is even worse than I predicted. They're probably going to make sure that their code for these games will only work on their proprietary server hardware. I see what's going on here. So even if hackers were to get access to the servers, unless they can replicate the proprietary server hardware, oh, I see. Yet another reason. It was bad enough even before this, but wow. These guys are dead set on just destroying all the goodwill they may have had with their audiences. You know, Soini literally refers to the elimination of piracy. This is a bold statement, as history shows that pirates can sometimes find clever ways around digital obstacles, but it will certainly be a lot harder than it is today. Oh, dude, I actually agree with Soini on this. If they can pull this off, it, it will eliminate piracy. I mean, it will also eliminate me as a customer because I will not partake in this cloud bullshit. The only way I would play a cloud-based game is if someone offered a service that let me stream a game that I already own as like another option. I, I'd be willing to put up with, uh, you know, maybe a lower quality video and a bit of lag if I could play my game on the go, like on, on my fucking phone while I'm traveling or something. I, I'd, I'd be fine with that. As long as I have the option to install it locally and play it on my PC if I wanted to. But cloud exclusivity, man, if they pull this off, the hackers would not only have to hack the company servers and get the source code of these games, but then they would either have to get the proprietary server hardware to run it on, or they would have to, to patch the code to run on a regular computer. The second is probably much more likely. So if they have a hacker that breaches uh, the, the, the company network and steals the code, and they got access to it, they might be able to modify it to work on a regular computer. But even then, that will be quite the undertaking. Cloud gaming has more direct consequences as well. In the patent, Sweeney writes that new game consoles are very expensive, adding that some people simply can't afford to pay for these devices. Yeah, they are low-key admitting that once cloud gaming becomes a thing, consoles are rendered irrelevant.
all you'd need is like a fucking streaming device, a smart TV, a fire stick, something like that. That's all you'd need for gaming if it's on the cloud. In many parts of the world, the cost of a game console is uh, such a high percentage of income that even if piracy were controlled, few people could afford state-of-the-art gaming systems. What? God, the lack of self-awareness from Sony is just sickening. They are aware that in certain parts of the world, consoles are prohibitively expensive, but they seem to be ignorant of the fact that most piracy happens in those regions as well, because the games themselves, as soiny prices in that region, are also prohibitively expensive. These guys are so stupid, they still legitimately believe that every pirated copy is a lost sale, when most of those pirated copies come from countries where people wouldn't have the money to buy them anyway. If you find some way to make piracy impossible... Watch your player base from everywhere but the first world just vanish overnight. And that's not even considering the bandwidth that would be required in those countries to actually stream those fucking games. Now, this would be fixed by cloud gaming too, as people no longer need expensive consoles. Yeah, instead, they need first world internet infrastructure, which most of the US doesn't even have. If you don't live in a major city in America, you're on third world quality internet. I know. That's me. This is good news for consumers, unless they live in an area with shitty internet. But of course, it also means Sony is missing a revenue stream. That's another reason they're trying to shift the PC right now. That said, Soiny highlights some other cloud gaming advantages for copyright holders as well. For example, resale of used games will be a thing of the past. At the same time, game manufacturers can more easily work with royalty method or models where their uh, games are sold on competing platforms. There's not going to be any competing platforms, well, other than, I guess, the streaming services. You guys realize what they're going to be doing, right? Yeah, they're going to have their proprietary service that where uh, you have to pay a fee to keep access to it and then buy the games and all the DLC separately. And then if it's like some licensed DLC, they'll just rip it from your account as soon as the license expires as well. Never going to be able to use that again. Sucks to be you. Hope you didn't want to ever play that again. And they're going to use the sunk cost fallacy to keep you there. It's bad enough with the uh, ga with games that already rely on addiction, but imagine if you had to pay a subscription to maintain access to your single player games. That then, uh, so, and even after milking you for a few years on that, they decide to shut the server down and you lose it anyway. Hashtag no refunds. Sucks to be you. The options discussed here are really just the tip of the iceberg. The full patent, which is available here, lays out a variety of cloud gaming platforms and possibilities. At this point, there's little doubt that cloud gaming is here to stay. Well, yeah, because all the big players are going to force it on us whether we want to or not. The only way this stops is if we make sure that all of their cloud offerings are a massive failure. Let them waste billions of dollars building up infrastructure and then having no one play it. Sony's own PlayStation Now platform recently passed the milestone of a million subscribers and the competition is fierce. Whether it will ever replace PC and console gaming is another question altogether. Yeah, well, maybe if the entire rest of the world suddenly had uh, high quality, affordable internet access, but never going to happen. I'm just going to point and laugh as they burn themselves down. Oh man, I am so excited to tell you guys right now that finally, after about a year of build-up and shilling, we have launched Blade Devil on Indiegogo, and so far it is doing so well thanks to awesome people like you. If you haven't backed it yet, then please check the links in the description and check out Blade Devil on Indiegogo. You will not be disappointed. Looking forward to seeing you there.